We are continuing our journey south from Egypt to Ethiopia. Coming to Ethiopia wasn't an easy decision, as the civil war ended just last year and there are still ongoing tensions in the Amara region in the north. Landing in Addis Ababa, the capital and the central of the country, we are surprised to find a modern and fast-growing city, a commercial and political hub in the region. It's a funny contrast, inside of like very modern Addis Ababa, there are still golds on the street. <laughs> We're excited to try the local gastronomy about which we've heard a lot, particularly injera, a spongy sour pancake. Ethiopian dishes are usually meant to be shared and eaten by hands with the help of injera. On Wednesdays and Fridays, which are fasting days for the Christians Orthodox, most restaurants only offer vegetarian options. Too bad for you if you don't like injera, since it's part of virtually every meal. Worth mentioning is definitely the Ethiopian coffee, strong in taste and accompanied by a brief incense burning ritual. Another specialty that you shouldn't miss is Tej, a local honey wine always served in this tiny round bottle. First day exploring Ethiopia, already we are shocked. <laughs> I mean, we tried to take the metro and they found like a bottle of water in Lisa's bag. I mean, they're excited to search your bag. Very excited, they search everything. And, uh, <laughs> they ask what is the glasses, what is this? And apparently the bottle of water is a big problem, so we have to drink it in front of them. You cannot take it in the metro. So we just drank uh, lit one liter of water. Yeah. So yeah. now we're going to the toilet instead of the museum. <laughs> also, we're waiting for a metro and it doesn't look like it's coming very frequently. So that's the first impressions. And another interesting thing, a little guy just offered me to pay for uh, being weighted. So he has a scale for table one, he walks with it and uh, people can uh, know their weight. Yeah. The metro finally comes and it's packed. We get off at Mescal Square and visit a nicely decorated local church. The country is highly religious with approximately 70% Christians and it shapes their everyday life. In fact, their time and calendar are different from the rest of the world, seven years behind. We head to the National Museum of Ethiopia and we are excited to meet Lucy, the most famous hominid fossil ever discovered. Indeed, Ethiopia is the cradle of humankind where many well-preserved human and animal fossils have been found. Fun fact, she was named after the song Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds by the Beatles. Paul was happy to try some meat, fresh and cut directly in front of you. Actually, beef is the most affordable kind of meat in Ethiopia, whereas chicken is seen as a delicacy reserved only for special occasions. What did you get? This <laughs> popular dish. Happy birthday! So this was interesting. <laughs> we just came from a birthday party that happened on the street. We stumbled upon them very randomly. <laughs> they just said, "Come, come, come, share like the bread with us." So we came, we sat down. Bread was a um, supplement for a birthday cake and there were like literal candles stuck in it. We got some beers. Multiple for free. Multiple beers. And now we're eating uh, oh, French fries. So good. That are covered in uh, someone's math, math homework. <laughs> but it's so good we're enjoying so much. <laughs> Such a nice day. Super nice. <laughs> We are visiting the famous Mercato with our local friend Thomas, who is showing us around this busy place, even though it's less than usual since we're visiting on Sunday. It's still packed with the merchants ready to sell you anything from fake shoes to secondhand electronics. This place is huge and even has a recycling section, similarly to Garbage City in Cairo. People here salvage and reuse everything you can imagine. There is no fixed place. Yeah? There is no fixed place. You should bark. It's one of the most common things in Africa. Just bark, bark, bark. Am I say something? 1,000? You might buy 200. 200. Yeah. <laughs> you should really bark. Yeah? Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Thomas is taking us for a dinner to an amazing place, Totot Cultural Restaurant, where we enjoyed our meal with a traditional show. The stage was busy with the performers during the whole night, impressing us with their singing and dancing. Okay, so we're at the airport. In Addis Ababa and we're flying to Lalibea. Actually, it was a really nice surprise uh, because last two days I spent in bed getting through some stomach issues. <laughs> but Paul had a chance to discuss um, a bit more with uh, the locals. And we discovered that it's possible to fly to Lalibea, actually. Yeah, because we thought that security-wise it was a bit uh, maybe unstable, not so, so good. Actually, it looks like if you fly directly into the town, at the moment it's okay, so that's what we're doing. A short flight transports us to Lalibela Airport, followed by a 30-minute drive up the mountain until we reach Holiday's Hotel, which prepared a cute surprise for us, a special attention for the only guests in town. Lalibela is a small town hidden in the mountains of northern Ethiopia, home to world-famous monolith churches that have attracted many pilgrims and visitors for centuries. We are walking its empty streets, uphill, to the UNESCO World Heritage Complex. Great to just like walk around and suddenly stumble upon a hole in the cave and you follow it and suddenly you find like an amazing view. <laughs> uh, really hard to show on the videos or pictures, but uh, the site is incredible and we are just at the beginning. Just the beginning, yeah. I think that uh, the best is yet to come, but for now already. And we got some gifts from the Holy Church for the 100 euro entrance ticket that's what you get yeah. gift so not only they carve the churches they also carve the passageways the caves the windows the doors and this site is, is actually quite huge and you just walk in this uh... labyrinth <laughs> How deep it is? So you know, 50 meters, 20 meters. Wow. Yeah, I have chills. <gasps> Good morning. This is our second day in Lalibela. And uh, it's early morning and we came back to the church because that's why we came here. <laughs> and they are so impressive. And this one is a St. George. It's, uh, it has a crucifix shape and it's maybe the most um, famous, like, it looks so beautiful. Like, it's a giant pit and in the middle you have like, this beautiful church. So on the side there are in total 11 churches. They all are part of the UNESCO World Heritage, which is no surprise because they are incredible piece of work. They've been carried out. That of uh, yeah, of the rock, like directly, like from the mountain. Basically, they just with their like kind of primitive tool. It was made in the 12th century. They just created out these churches, and not only the outside, but also the inside. When you can go in, and inside it's like real churches with arches, windows. And each church has uh, its priest that lives there and takes care of the church. So, for example, this one behind us has a has a priest who's been living there for the past 12 years and probably is going to die in there. And I just wanted to uh, come back again like to the importance of the religious site. Uh, basically, this was built by King Lalibela once uh, as a new Jer Jerusalem because Jerusalem was conquered by the Muslims and so he wanted to create a new site and so it's extremely holy for like the Orthodox uh, Christians. And apparently it's super packed during uh, Christian holidays like uh, Christmas or Easter. It's like a pilgrimage site that uh, is packed with people. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking how big of a role the Christian, like the religion, plays in their daily life. So we just seen an old lady coming with us through the passages, and she kept praying out loud. And uh, once we reached the place. She kissed every corner of the church and did a special prayer and then did the last kind of uh, thinking out loud in front of the church and she kissed the ground and she seemed very humble and uh, 
asking for something. Obviously, we didn't understand what she's saying, but uh, she was very much in her own thoughts and prayers. It's, um, yeah, it's interesting to see. Overall, we had a great experience with Lalibela and its people. We had the opportunity to interact with many kids and even learned to play Mankala, the popular stone game. This is the end of part one of our Ethiopian adventure, but stay tuned for part two, where we feed wild hyenas and visit the tribes of Omo Valley. If you're interested in more details, you can check out our Instagram at Lisa and Paul, where we share and save many stories of our Cairo to Cape Town journey. Bye-bye, see, see you soon. soon.